you will be notified now. So good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to welcome you to for this webinar to the CO2 solutions for convenience stores. I am Anaïs Benard. I'm in charge of the communications for Profroid. I am with Kate Sani, our product manager, and Nicola Guglielmi, our world sales and export manager. Some technical information on how to use Zoom. If you want to raise a question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, the webinar will last about one hour. Next slide, please, Sheriff. We will uh, first uh, have an introduction about the history of CO2 uh, at Profroi. Then we will discuss about the uh, CO2 technology available. Uh, we will also give you a presentation of the CO2 solutions for common stores, and uh, we, you will discover some references. A at the end, uh, we will conclude the webinar with a Q&A session. I will now hand over to Shape Sandy, our product manager. Thanks, Anais. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, webinar concerning the convenience stores solution with CO2 refrigerants. Um, today, uh, when for starting, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, regulation. Uh, nowadays, you, you've heard more and more uh, about uh, global regulation, so more health protocol to avoid using the refrigerant that has an effect on the ozone layer of the planet. Uh, you've heard about um, the uh, Kigali Amendment about reducing HFC uh, refrigerants for the global warming uh, question. And uh, also in Europe, we are talking about earth gas and uh, these last uh, years, this uh, regu regulation has been more and more uh, the topic uh, of, uh, around the discussion between the uh, refrigeration professionals. And um, for instance, in the air gas regulation, we've had um, a threshold in 2020 uh, banning the air force for A. And uh, this year, we'll also have in April the, a new threshold um, uh, uh, to forbid the uh, use of uh, HFC over 150 as a GWP for installation over 40 kilowatts and uh, for commercial uh, commercial use. So it looks like the regulation are pushing more and more on sustainable solution using uh, most of the time uh, natural refrigerant. And uh, we uh, at Profoa, we made the choice to develop uh, our solution or portfolio with, uh, with CO2. And this has, been, has started in 2008 with the acquisition by Carrier, so the group that we belong to, uh, of uh, Linde. Linde was a company that was specialized in the, in CO2, and we start to we started in 2008 by proposing on the market the hybrid solution. So hybrid, it's a HFC with uh, working uh, with the CO2 in LT application. And uh, since then, we've developed all the, the products from uh, the Transcritical Solution, uh, the full CO2 solution in 2010 with Minicool Compact, uh, with the, the quite cool, so the small capacity condensing unit up to the, the really big installation uh, for industrial application like with the power cool. And the uh, development has not been on, on this uh, product, but also on the uh, compatible products, so we have the heat exchanger with the air coolers as well as the, the gas coolers with it. So now we are one of the main actors of the refrigeration with CO2 that is proposing solutions from one kilowatt up to 1.5 megawatt. Um, Before going into the, the product detail, I would like to um, talk about the difference between HFC and, and CO2. Um, HFC, the, the, the goal between the two systems is to distribute uh, liquid uh, within the, uh, the consumers from, on HFC one and on, on CO2 one. The, uh, to, to get to this point, 
the way to operate is different from HFC to CO2. HFC, you all know there's a state change within the heat exchanger with the ambient temperature. And this state change of the refrigerant goes to liquid uh, refrigerant inside the receiver. In CO2, it's quite different because depending on the uh, ambient temperature, we could be over the transcritical point and we had to we have to to use additional components to to have the uh, liquid co2 inside the receiver and these components these additional components are the hp valve and the medium pressure valve and and uh, all the points is that the, the co2 uh, has a GLP of uh, one and it's uh, there's no limitation in use like for hfc and uh, hfo so sustainable so now let's have a look on the details how, how the uh, system works. So we have, we've got the compression from 1.2, and then we have the the uh, isobar cooling in the gas cooler over the critical point. Then we have a uh, um, isentalpic expansion with the HP valve, and here we are inside the receiver. So on one part we have the liquid line, and on the other part we have the uh, the vapor and this liquid is distributed to the, the consumer, so the, the cold, could be the cold room, it could be a, a cabinet. And here we have the expansion valve uh, on, on the, uh, the cabinet, for instance. Here you have the expansion valve from the MP valve, medium pressure valve, to, uh, to be able to uh, control actually the pressure inside the receiver. And here we come back to the, the compressor. And as you can see, Depending on the ambient temperature, you could have the proportion uh, on of the vapor and on the liquid could, could be higher on vapor. So, and you would have to inject a lot of vapor within the section part of the, the compressor. And that's what we said on the higher temperature, higher ambient temperature, the um, CO2 system is uh, less efficient. So now let's have a look on the uh, control loops. On a, on a CO2 system, we have different control loops, and these all loops are uh, controlled by the, the main controller. Um, all all the controller brands are operating the same, maybe differently because they have different algorithms, but in the, in the same way. I mean, the, the input are the same. So for instance, the first loop in a range is the uh, compressor stage loop. So we have the MT and LT for both. The control is the same. So we are measuring the pressure at the section on uh, both sides. And we are controlling, we are adapting actually the, the cooling capacity of each stage by changing uh, the, the speed, for instance, or the capacity, if you are using another device, or by switching on and off the other compressor of the stage. The second loop is the, the gas cooler. So the gas cooler, to, to control it, we need to measure the ambient temperature and the gas cooler outlet temperature. And from these two, we will try to maintain a 2K delta T between these two temperatures. The third loop is the HP valve. So the HP valve is one of the main components. This is a really a critical component because it, uh, it will uh, define if your system is efficient or not. I will explain to this. So first, for the control, we need to measure the ambient temperature and the high pressure. And the, the, the goal is to maintain the, the adequate uh, high pressure level uh, on the HP side. And it's critical, why? Because depending on the ambient temperature, you need to have a, a really precise uh, high pressure because if it's the, high, the high pressure is too high or if it's too low, then it will affect, in a way, the uh, COP. Uh, if, it, if your pressure is too low, then you will not have enough cooling capacity, so the COP of your system will drop. If you have a too high uh, pressure, high pressure, then your compressor will absorb too much uh, power, and then also your COP will, will drop. So the control is here to just place the right pressure at the, day, at, uh, the current temperature to have really the best uh, COP of the, of the system. And then we have the last loop, the, the, this is the MP valve loop, and actually it's just measure the <coughs> receiver pressure 
and the, the goal is to maintain the uh, convenient receiver pressure uh, according to the operation of the system. So now let's talk about the solutions. So this is a, a wheel application, application wheel or a product wheel that you you will see a lot on our website or on our documentation. So commercial documentation could be a leaflet as well or brochure. And uh, what's interesting uh, on this wheel is that we have uh, two scales uh, showing you the cooling capacity in kilowatts, empty, and the surface. This is for the application for supermarket application, uh, so in square meter. And in green, you have also the volume because uh, on the higher capacity, we're talking more about warehouse or um, industrial application. Uh, and on the each, case you have uh, the solution that we, we provide so from quite cool for small capacity up to the uh, the highest capacity so 1.5 megawatt with the power cool and in between we have also high efficient products so power cool and cool tech evo using the uh, <clears throat> the last generation of co2 solution with the vapor ejector uh, today the uh, webinar will uh, concentrate the uh, about the uh, small store solutions or so convenience store so we'll just talk about talk about uh, this part of uh, the wheel uh, but before entering into a uh, product let's have a look on the three different applications uh, that we can find with uh, with this solution so the first application would be the empty only so when i say empty only it's when you have only <coughs> empty call room or empty cabinet uh fitted with the the product so we've got the quiet cool so this is a small connection unit available with air cooled or water cooled also so the uh, you can cool down the the gas cooler with a water loop this is possible uh, and it's uh, quite good to be installed inside the building if you have a water loop available and then we have the uh, quite cool MC, which is a small rack, could be available. It is available in the uh, indoor version or outdoor version with gas cooler integrated, or it could be also outdoor version without gas cooler, but we'll see that uh, in uh, the next slide. And then we have also for big application for uh, stores up to 3,000 square meters, for instance, then we have the mini cool outdoor uh, for like it's really a good product for discounters, for instance. The second type of application is the LT only. When I say LT only, it means that you don't have to use the empty loads to produce the LT. So it's not a booster. We call it open flash system because you are able to produce only LT. So this typically is a, is a solution that you can use with a, um, a supermarket that sells only frozen food. And this solution is also available with air cool and water cooled gas cooler. And as you, as you can see on schematic on the right side, we have uh, we have uh, the coil, two coils. So this is the intercooler, this is the gas cooler, and these two coils are in in the same coil. Actually, it's uh, two separate coils within the same coil. Actually, and uh, the same. So we have two different uh, heat exchanger for the water cooled. And how it works, so we have, it's like a double stage compressor. We have the first level uh, section is from the, the cabinet, LT cabinet. And we uh, discharge through the intercooler to the receiver. And on the other compressor, we are just, we have the section from the receiver. So actually it's a parallel compressor or echo compressor as you want to the, the gas cooler. And we've got the uh, HP valve. As you can see, we don't have any more the medium pressure valve because this is a parallel compression and it's uh, just here to modulate or to control the, the receiver pressure. So the same for water cools here. And then the last type of application where the solution for convenience could be used is the booster version. And this time, the booster version is only available for small racks and uh, connecting units. And uh, it works as a um, normal uh, racks, so no, no change on that. This is just to show you how it is organized uh, with a, the boost, within a supermarket. So this is the booster version and this is the empty version. So now 
let's have a look how the, the solution uh, are used in different cases, how they are adapted. Just before saying this, uh, I just want to mention that uh, this year we are reaching uh, uh, 20,000 units manufactured of, uh, of CO2, so it's 20,000 CO2 units. And uh, the solution that you are uh, seeing on this slide are uh, thanks to, to you customers because for the development of, of each machine, uh, we, we always discuss with you, we always take feedback from the field, we always uh, take the, the, the best solution to, to, to uh, launch a product that is adapted to the market and that is also e easy to use and uh, easy to uh, operate. So as you can see, you have here all the different configurations that you can find within the city or outside the city. And here on the right side, we have the solution that we can offer. And we'll enter just into the data on the next slide. slide. So the first case is where you have um, the outdoor space. So, I mean, you could be outside of the, the, the city and then solution could, that can, you can use is either the condensing unit. So this is quite more comfortable because you don't have the HP side to connect. And it is also control, uh, connect, uh, tested and controlled uh, from the factory. And then another solution could be used for this configuration is the uh, condensing unit without gas cooler. And we can put also the uh, remote gas cooler. This is also a solution you can have if you want to reduce the, uh, to have a specific needs of about the, the noise level. So you can imagine to have multiply the uh, the fans to reduce the speed of the, uh, the, the gas cooler as well. Um, these products are, are all available with hermetic rotary uh, compressor or uh, semi-hermetic reciprocating as well. Second case is where you have, uh, you are in the city and you don't have space outside, but you have space within the, uh, inside the machinery room. And you can use the uh, indoor version as you can see, it's a rack that can be split in two, and the gas cooler as well can be split in two. And this is a gas cooler with centrifugal fan that can be ducted with the, the three rays, so on the right, top, and on the left side. So we have three, three directions. And um, this is really, uh, the, uh, this gas cooler can be delivered in, in the V shape or in the flat shape and uh, adapted to the, the quite cool. Uh, MC indoor solution. And then we have the last type of uh, application. It's, it is either where you have small terrace, small outside uh, space that doesn't allow you to put uh, uh, an outdoor unit, so with uh, the gas cooler uh, together. The uh, outdoor unit with gas cooler could be too big or the footprint could be too, too high. Then you have to use either uh, small racks uh, or are connected without uh, gas cooler and then you put the remote gas cooler and you also can have the uh, small machinery room with a small terrace then you can have a small rack with uh, either a remote gas cooler on the outside or a, a, another uh, a centrifugal gas cooler on another uh, room Concerning the indoor version, uh, we are about to launch uh, the extension of uh, the product. So up, up today, until today, we have uh, the, the cooling capacity was 50 kilowatt MT and 10 kilowatt LT. And uh, now with the, with the new version, we have up to 93 kilowatt MT and 17 kilowatt LT with uh, those combination of compressors. So up to four, comp four compressor MT or two plus two, uh, two MT and two LT. Uh, this allows us to have uh, more cooling capacity and we have also additional options. We have also a possibility to oversize the receiver so that will give more uh, flexibility uh, and more adaptability uh, uh, depending on the situation. Um, so the, the experience that we get with the, this 20,000 unit uh, of CO2 sold, uh, we have uh, adapted the design of the product, but not only, we are using also the, this experience, the feedback from the market to improve the, the regulation 
the control of, of the system. And uh, for instance, that's what we do with uh, the uh, quite cool. So on the quite cool, if you if you take the, the uh, cold room controller that is called Procold, uh, and it allows you to have uh, really really good features like the communication. We are more boost between the unit and and the cold room. And you have some anticipation. So, for instance, if your cold room at, is at the temperature and it sends that the uh, expansion valve is starting to close, then it will automatically reduce the compressor just to avoid the compressor to stop or pan down. And this is really good in terms of energy efficiency because it uh, it avoids, in a way, the short cycle. There are some other features like hall recovery. Um, better uh, temperature controls that is embedded already in the, uh, the controller. Uh, some other features is the real-time clock that allows you to, to parameter the real-time defrost or the, to having the feedback from the alarm and, and know, knowing exactly how much time the, uh, the call room stops, uh, the, the call production stops how many times. Uh, so yeah, so all of this uh, experience within the time, within the, the feedback, or with the feedback for, from you, is used either on the design but also on the on the controls. And here I can propose you to have a look on on some application picture. So on the right side you have the mini cool outdoor that is, I think it's for a discounter, well known. Uh, here you have the indoor rack, the quite cool MC indoor. Here you have the outdoor version, and here on the rooftop you have also the uh, remote gas cooler that has been installed. Uh, by the way, here you have also the heat exchanger, the commercial heat exchanger. This is the dual discharge heat exchanger that is uh, installed for the fresh, fresh, uh, fresh products. So let's have a look on the advantage on CO2 solution. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take uh, the example of France because um, we, we know it. Uh, our customer in France, they, uh, they always talk about uh, the uh, incentives or different financial advantage. I'm going to talk, uh, give you some, some, some example, but I'm sure that locally uh, in your country, you might have uh, some incentive or some some help from from your government that will just bring some advantage on CO2 solution, and uh, uh, you you will see that when we compare HFC solution with CO2 solution, at the beginning, yes, it could be a more expensive, but on on a medium medium term, mid term, um, it could be uh, at the end uh, the, the CO2 could be a much more much better position than the, the HFC. So, for instance, these are the, uh, we call it forms in France. Uh, these forms uh, are used in a way to um, push people using uh, virtuous uh, solutions. So like using CO2 or like using variable speed drive. And each form will give you a, 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 a really simple calculation, uh, giving you an amount of kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour. Uh, of energy saving within the life of the product. So I think they're based on 15 years. And from this, you can this can be exchanged with an incentive. Uh, this is uh, this is financed by the, uh, the the companies that are polluting a lot, like like uh, oil and gas uh, manufacturers, for instance. And we did uh, uh, a short comparison on application. So for 100 kilowatt MT and uh, 30, 10 to 15 kilowatt B, uh, low temperature. So BT, sorry, it's in France, it's, it's low temperature, back temperature. And then between CO2, the, the, the comparison is between CO2 and HFC. So first we have only one rack because it's a booster, booster system on CO2 and two racks on the uh, HFC. At the beginning, beginning, the investment price is uh, 110% compared to HFC. But as you can see on the incentive, you have much more incentive on the CO2. And because 
also uh, the CO2 allows you to uh, recover heat much in a much better way than the HFC. So it allows a minus 43% reduction on the invest on the first investment compared to minus 38%. And we also have uh, in terms of tax uh, another advantage for the the company, meaning that if you, if you invest in the natural resilient solution then you can have up to 12 percent of uh, of the of saving within five years so at the end after five years so it's not even uh, until the end of the right life because the right life we are talking about about around 15 years at the end after five years your your co2 investment is on represents only 56 percent compared to 62 percent of hfc so co2 system hello some incentives. I'm sure that in your country it could be also the case, uh, the same as in, in France. Tax reduction, I'm not sure, but it's also interesting to check because we are all in the, in the European Union. We we, need, we all need to to follow the uh, to have virtuous uh, in, installations for consuming uh, less and less. So and this is more and more the case with the current situation. So I, I think the uh, I'm sure that the government will will uh, be will push for 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 the for this uh, kind of solution. Um, and so at the end, so one, if you addition uh, one incentive and the the other helps, you you can be better positioned with the CO2 solution. And on top of that, it's a, a sustainable solution. And you and nobody will tell you. Uh, about uh, JWP, nobody will tell you about toxicity or or danger or flammability or or something something like this. So going with CO2 is is really um, the solution uh, at uh, this period of time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let just the hand to Anais who will talk about the uh, delays and uh, product deliveries. So regarding our production times, uh, our products are either in stock or available within four weeks. Uh, all our products are manufactured in France in our Aubain uh, factory. PID and 3D are available uh, on request. Regarding uh, the different documents uh, available, we have commercial and marketing documents such as the leaflet. But we have also a technical document such as the brochure or the uh, installation manual uh, and also the commissioning documents uh, that are available directly from our technical support uh, department. The leaflet and the brochure are available on our website, profoire.com. <coughs> uh, so do not hesitate to visit our uh, website if you need uh, a document from our for our one of our projects. Now I will hand over to uh, Nicola, who will give you uh, the keys uh, for a successful installation. Thank you, Anaï. Hello, everybody. Um, now uh, I will uh, present you the advice from our technician um, to be performed for a good commissioning, as Anaï said. So first point, um, if you have a, 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 an indoor installation, uh, you must install the safety valves at, outside the building. Also, uh, regarding the, 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 the size of the room, but I would say um, it's, it's better to do it anyway, uh, you need a detection device for CO2 and also a good ventilation inside. On point two, um, if you have a, a gas cooler, a remote gas cooler, it is better to make sure that it's positioned be above the rack. Uh, we just received a, a question regarding this point, actually. But if you can uh, uh, position the... the the exchange above the rack, it's much better to improve its drainage. Also, uh, make sure to to balance, uh, to, to have the pipeline well balanced at the left of the gas cooler, of course. 
And uh, uh, it's important to direct the, the outlet elbows downwards to allow the permanent drainage of the gas cooler during the operation. Point three regarding the expansion valve selection. Uh, here it's done at uh, 35 bar. Uh, for the MT, it's good to have it at uh, minus, 10, min minus 10 uh, degree section on the section line and minus 35 LT also at the section line, of course. And it's important to select a larger orifice because uh, when you are going to, uh, after the defrost, you can overload the coil. So it's better to have a larger orifice inside the expansion valve. Uh, regarding the super heat point four, uh, what we recommend for the empty evaporator is to have uh, between 8 and 12K with an MOP of minus 5 degree. And for the LT evaporator, um, between 7 and 10K, the superheat will be okay with an MOP at minus 25. Also, be make sure to uh, position uh, the the sensor on the, the horizontal uh, tube, of course, at five o'clock position. Next slide, please, Sheriff. Here are some basic reminders for installing the unit. So uh, when you get a wall, uh, if you install the, the, the unit next to a wall, of course, you need to have a, a sufficient space between the wall and the unit for operation, uh, but also to adjust the, 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 the air. Uh, also, uh, when you have uh, try to try to install the unit in a, in a place free of any external dust and pollutant that could clog the the, um, the gas cooler, of course. Um, be very careful also uh, not to uh, exhaust the air from a unit directly to uh, the exchanger of another unit that could be uh, next to this one. Uh, in face-to-face, -face, uh, we advise to keep at least two meters between the units, and it will be okay. And uh, a maximum difference of five meters between uh, uh, the, um, the unit and the exchanger. And by the way, over, over that high, uh, it, it, is, it is necessary to, um, to install a, an oil truck. This will be done every five meters. O okay. Now, regarding the nameplate, on the nameplate, you have all the information that you need, especially the service pressure. So according to the service pressure indicated on the nameplate, you will uh, verify that the safety valves installed on the line are according to the, this service pressure. Uh, Oh, yes, this is very important. Uh, the external sensor, try to avoid to, uh, to install it uh, directly on, on sunlight because this will disturb the, the, the summer winter regulations. So it is very important to install it away from the sun. So we'll, you will not have this problem uh, all over the year. This is uh, regarding also if you ins install the unit uh, next to a wall, uh, be careful to maintain a distance of at least one meter to facilitate the heat rejection. Uh, normally, uh, the, the, the quite cool standards are designed to be uh, placed on the, uh, directly on the floor, flat. Uh, 
it is a, it is this time to absorb vibration. Uh, so it is not recommended to use uh, anti vibration pads. But if you really need, in some cases, it, it, it is it is needed to install some uh, uh, brackets. Then in this case, what we recommend is to use horizontal brackets along the entire length of the unit. But if, if it's not necessary, uh, we prefer that you install the unit directly on the floor, uh, very flat. Uh, of course, the, li the liquid line is considered an extension uh, of the tank. So it is very important to take care of the thermal insulation. Uh, this will, uh, this will, of course, avoid to increase the pressure and the temperature. So insulation is very important in this case. Uh, regarding the section filter, sometimes you can have uh, uh, a difference of delta p. This could be. Uh, because of the, the the filter is clutched. So you can check it. Um, if it's clutched, you can remove it. That means that uh, the, the rest of the secret is, all, is already clean. Nevertheless, if you will uh, uh, intervene uh, for some reason uh, in the system, uh, then you have to uh, um, install again the, the suction filter. Very important. Uh, regarding the heat recovering system, uh, it, it, remember to connect the zero 10 volt signal to our unit. This will control perfectly the recovery system. It is indicated in our uh, instruction manual anyway. Um, and pressure. Oh yes. Um, or re regarding the tank pressure switch setting, it has to be according to uh, your network. Uh, when you order the unit, you order with a certain uh, uh, service pressure. Uh, nevertheless, it can be changed after. So the um, the, the pressure switch of the tank must be set according to the new uh, service pressure on the liquid line. Uh, regarding the control of the cold room uh, in communication with our unit, we, um, it, we really recommend to use the, the same brain for like the same brain as we have in the unit. This will be uh, much better for the regulation and much more stable. Uh, moreover, moreover, we strongly recommend to choose a shield cable, actually the shield cable that we use, uh, which, which, is, which has been uh, validated by our technical department, uh, which is the Belden 3, 3106A uh, for the communication RS485. On the left, uh, we are now with the all receiver of the quite cool MC. Uh, to fill up the, the, the receiver with the oil, we recommend to, to fill up seal the second side glass during the commission. On the right, you also have the diagrams to, which will help you to determine the quantity of CO2 that you have to uh, fill in the, in the unit. Uh, something very important is the color that you have on the left. Uh, it's uh, totally forbidden to be on the red side. It works on the green and the yellow side. Nevertheless, if you are on the yellow side, it is also forbidden to make a pump down. So the, the, 
the best way is to be on, 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 the green, on the green side. But on the yellow side, it also worked perfectly. The only thing that you cannot do, it's a thumb down. Ah, okay, so this is for you, Sheriff. Yeah, thank you, Nicola. Um, thank you. Just finished uh, a few words about the footprint of the, our solution, quite cool. Uh, as you can see, the, the countries where the quite cool is the, the most installed, this is Germany, northern country France, and uh, more and more in the South Europe with, uh, with Spain, especially. And uh, today, <clears throat> no, uh, we have manufactured uh, until today 20,000 uh, all, all CO2, it could be transferred to uh, small capacity, big capacity. And uh, for, for the uh, quantity unit, it's really quite cool. We have more than 3,000 units sold uh, within Europe. And if you had the uh, small racks or the quite cool MC, then we you are over 4,000 4, uh, units. Just just to know to let you know that we have experience on the field, uh, and from this experience, uh, we use it to improve uh, or design to improve the the controls and to to make you uh, to deliver you a product that is easier and it is also uh, better in terms of use in terms of uh, installation. So. Thanks for, for, for your feedback also, and uh, we, uh, we, we work to make you, your life easier with, with our product, with our solution. And, uh, and also the, uh, the uh, energy saving part uh, with the uh, new generation, with the, for instance, with the ejector is also uh, uh, considered in our developments. Uh, so we think we think also about this. So all of this is taken in account in our development um, to 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 make uh, our product uh, the best uh, on on the market. So I've finished uh, with the, my side, and uh, we are it's uh, eleven forty two. We have uh, uh, fifteen minutes again to uh, have the question and answers. Yeah, so yes, thank you, Sharif. Thank you, Nicola. So we have received uh, a few questions. So the first one is, uh, which service pressure should we have on the consumers? And can we have a lower service pressure than the receiver pressure? So I think this is for Sharif. Yes, uh, I can answer this. So if, if you if you consider quite cool, uh, we have a service pressure of 90 bar. Quite cool MC, we have uh, 80 bar service pressure. So it could be that the your consumer will have a lower service pressure. And you need to consider that uh, the expansion valve of the uh, the consumer, of the, uh, the the call room or the, the cabinet, is um is separating actually the, the part of the system, the, uh, the, the the rack system and the part of the low pressure system. And uh, just to let you know that the, the service, service pressure of the, uh, the rack is protecting the receiver as well as the liquid line. So the liquid line going from the, uh, the unit and also the liquid line that you installer is uh, the piping that you put in, the, uh, in this installation to reach the, the, the consumer. So, so to 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 get this protection, I mean, you you the the the, the pipe, the pipe, the service pressure of the piping needs to be the same as uh, the receiver uh, safety valve. On the low pressure side, so on the uh, evaporator for a cold room, if the service pressure is lower, then you need to protect this uh, all the the consumer with uh, a safety valve on the section line of the of the system, and you can also have different service pressure, like for instance, if you have a, a 45 bar service pressure on a cabinet and a 60 bar uh, service pressure on, a, on the evaporator, then in this way, you will need to protect the, uh, the, the same section line with a, the with a lowest service pressure, so 45 bar to be able to protect the, the cabinet. Because if you put 60 bar, then you, you understand that uh, your cabinet will not be protected as well. Okay, thank you, Sherry. Second question, I think it's from Nicola. Uh, what is the cooling capacity range of the quiet cool LC only? Of the quiet cool? 
LT. LT only. LT only. Yeah. From zero from zero to uh, six point five kilowatts or something. Like, yes. Okay. And uh, the last question for the moment. So, is there any quiet cool MT uh, with integrated gas cooler? Standard quiet cool? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, quiet cool MT with an integrated gas cooler. I think it's um, maybe Sherry for Nicola, you want to answer? Yeah, well, actually, I can, I can all talk. the standard, uh, all the standard, quite cool, are with uh, uh, gas uh, integrated gas cooler. The quite cool MC multi compressor, um, you have both possibility uh, with uh, integrated gas cooler and uh, remote gas cooler. Uh, the question was on quite cool MC or the MC extension, uh, Nice. On the quiet cool MC. Uh, ah, okay. Whatever. In, in general, the, uh, the, as you can see, um, when you talk about the uh, supermarkets that are in the, the city, or usually these buildings are already existing, and uh, to access inside the building, the machinery room, it's really tight. Uh, if you if you go to the stairs, it's really tight. The height is not uh, really high. Uh, and uh, we know by experience when we we, we produce. Um, Quality unit fitted with the uh, centrifugal gas cooler, it's quite big, and the footprint footprint also is big, so it will not enter uh, inside the uh, the space, uh, and it will be hard also to split such a system. So we uh, have decided to propose um, uh, the solution that we, we showed you that can be split. So, so the quite cool MC can be split in two parts. The remote centrifugal gas cooler also that can be split. If for, for this question, if we if we had to develop an um, integrated uh, centrifugal gas cooler, I'm afraid that we will not uh, be able to enter the uh, the, the building with, with this, this solution. Okay. So last question we just received, when uh, the extended range of Quiet Cool MT will be released? Easy one. I think it's, it's uh, soon, soon. It's in, in April, actually. Thank you, Sharif. Uh, we didn't receive any more questions. Uh, we have still some time, so if you want, uh, to raise a question, use the Q&A uh, button or the discussion panel. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. For, so no more questions. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you, Sheriff and Nicola. We will soon thank send you, you the replay. <laughs> so you will soon return email with the, with the replay and the customer survey. Uh, do not hesitate uh, to visit our website. Uh, or to check our LinkedIn page uh, to be uh, to know to be informed of our next uh, event. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.